Her name is Belva Davis, a true broadcast pioneer, a woman who helped pave the way for generations of journalists, including our 60 Minutes colleague, Bill Whitaker. Hope and fear drove six million black Americans to leave the South in what is known as the Great Migration. They went north and west, seeking opportunity and safety. Our story is about one of them, an eight-year-old girl who in 1941 was carried along in that hopeful, historic flood of humanity by train to California. Her name, Belva Davis. And one day, she would write her own role in American history. I was encouraged by the shifting tides of the time. I had no idea of the mountain I was climbing. Along the way, she influenced so many people, including me. I met Belva in 1979 and soon heard her favorite saying, don't be afraid of the space between your dreams and reality. Knowing Belva Davis changed my life. She was born in Monroe, Louisiana to a 15-year-old girl who worked in a laundry. At the time, lynchings were a brutal reality for blacks in the South. When her uncle was threatened with being tarred and feathered, the entire family headed west. There, Belva excelled in school and graduated from Berkeley High. But with no money for college, she found a job and her voice in black radio. The most consistent thing about my early journalistic life is that I never got paid for anything. <laughs> yeah. The 1964 Republican Convention in California changed everything, as Belva told a gathering at Google. America was making a very sharp turn politically. While covering the convention for black radio, she saw the power of television. We couldn't get press passes because we were minority media. We were in the rafters. Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. When a mob did find us, they yelled to us, what are you niggas doing in here anyway? We were driven out of that hall. I thought to myself, watching the major media work, seeing the hatred from that floor, but seeing their power to tell that story, I want to be able to tell people what happens to us. You see me first as a Negro, and then as a human, I'm first a human being. It convinced me that I could do this job. The big news. But convincing a television station to hire her was next to impossible. Blacks were all but invisible on TV news. And it was a manager saying to me, we have not yet decided to hire negresses, but if we ever do, we will certainly think about you. In 1967, as protests exploded across the country, during the riots, Belva landed an on-air spot at KPIX, the CBS affiliate in San Francisco, believed to be the first black female TV reporter in the Western United States. Thereby disarming the whole world. What Angela Davis had to say here at UC Berkeley was no different from what many other radicals have said. Belva's husband, Bill Moore, who was a cameraman at another station, worried about her new job. It was challenging for her because here she was, a little black girl, going to work at this station with a bunch of old, white, redneck cameramen. And I liked every one of them, but they were still rednecks. I was often asked to leave news conferences because no one could imagine that I was a real, legitimate reporter. Belva brought a black woman's perspective to stories the mainstream press often ignored. One on a young black boxer named Muhammad Ali. We don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't chase white women, we're not looking in a grave, we bathe twice a day, pray five times a day, but yet we seem to be the most despised and hated. Eyewitness News with Belva Davis. And I kind of knew I'd made it when I stopped paying attention to the hate mail. It didn't mean anything to me anymore. <laughs> there is brutality here, believe me. Moving to the NBC affiliate... This is a story about black and white. She took on the hot topic of police brutality. It's also a story about fear. Long before it became a national concern. Charles Goldston wears a metal brace because his neck is broken. The officer who allegedly beat Charles Goldston is black, and so is the mayor and much of the power structure in this town. Along the way, she overcame countless racial and gender barriers. TV viewers of all races came to trust Belva. Anchoring the evening news at San Francisco's public station, she exuded calm, even when the world seemed to be spinning out of control. 
Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. Willie Brown, a future San Francisco mayor, I will remember George Moscone as lived through those grim days. How can I forget George Moscone? I don't think he's dead. Belva was so trusted. She had so much credibility and so much respect. Harvey Milk was no ordinary supervisor. So Belva carried a heavy load. You are so fabulous, Belva. <laughs> Kamala Harris, a future vice president. You have been a role model to me. Today, black journalists walk in Belva's footsteps. I'm associate producer Bill Whitaker. Belva was my mentor at that public TV station, showing me by her actions and work ethic how to succeed in a tough profession. But how do you thank the person who pushed the door open for so many of us? Hello, Belva. How are you, my friend? Oh, my God. Today at 90, Belva struggles with age and memory. But what has not diminished is her legacy, born from the simple power of her dream. Love you, Belva. Don't be afraid of the space between your dreams and reality. If you dream it, you can make it so.